Welcome back everyone. We have a problem here with very little information in it. We we're given the density of ice and we're told that an ice cube is placed into a glass of water and we're supposed to figure out the acceleration. So there's a sketch and we can draw a free body diagram. And let's think about what's going to be happening here. We all probably have a common experience, which is that we know that ice floats. So if it floats, what does that mean? Well, when it's floating, the buoyant force is going to be equal to the weight. But here, the ice cube is not floating. It is accelerating upward. And so we expect the acceleration to have a positive value. Okay, once it gets to the surface, Okay, if we just draw another one, when it gets to the surface, some of the ice cube is going to be out of the water. And at that point, then the buoyant force is going to be equal to the weight. That is for the floating case. Well, we're analyzing this case. It's going to have a positive acceleration. Of course, this, where it's floating, that would have an acceleration of zero. Here, we have an acceleration upward. And let's go ahead and sum the forces in accordance with Newton's second law of motion. So Fb minus W equals May, or we could write it as Fb minus mg equals may. So we're trying to solve for a sub y. Well, we know the, let's see, we, we don't know the buoyant force, but we could put it in terms of this. So we could say rho gv minus mg equals may. And hmm, there's really such a little amount of information given here. And let's be let's be careful with our subscripts here. This is the vol the, the density of water because that's the fluid. You know g. This is the volume of the ice cube. It's also well, it's equal. It's the volume of water displaced, but it is equal to the volume of the ice cube because it's fully submerged. So, volume of ice equals volume of water displaced all right well for the ice cube we could analyze this so we can take this and we can say the mass of the ice cube is equal to the volume of the ice cube times the density of the ice cube so we do have that as a possibility let's see which which mass are these things here this is what are we analyzing? What did we draw a free body diagram for? Okay, this, this problem can be really confusing if you don't keep track of things. So this is for the ice cube. So we're analyzing the ice cube using Newton's second law. And so the object that's accelerating would be the ice cube. The weight, it's the weight of the ice cube. So that means this is also the mass of the ice cube there. We can take this and we could put it in here and there. Okay, so then we have density of water times g times the volume. And that's the volume of the, the ice cube, because the, remember the volume of the ice cube and the volume of water displaced are the same. We put that in there. Let's see, volume, ice, density of ice times g equals volume of ice, density of ice times a sub y. And now we're getting somewhere because now we can divide through by the volume of the ice cube. And we might as well go ahead and divide by the density of the ice cube. So volume of ice cube cancels out because it's in every term. And then we're left with density of water over density of ice cube um, times g minus, see density of ice cube cancels out. 
So we're left with G there. Density of ice cube and density of ice cube cancels out there. Oh, and a little bit off the screen here. Let me pull this up. Okay, so again, this comes from here. Density of water, density of water, G. And then we're dividing by P sub I, so that part cancels out, and then we have the density of the ice cube there. And then for this term, both the volume and the density of the ice cube cancel out, so we just get G. And then on this side, well, the whole reason we divided by P sub I, rho sub I, is because they were here. We wanted to get the acceleration by itself. And so now we can plug in these values. The density of water is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter divided by the density of ice, which was given in the problem as 917 kilograms per cubic meter. Multiply that by 9.8 meters per second squared and subtract 9.8 meters per second squared. And that is equal to our acceleration. So now we can plug these in. 1,000 divided by 917 times 9.8 minus 9.8, and we get 0 0.887 meters per second squared. Did come out to be a positive value, which we expected. The sign's correct. It only asked us to find the acceleration, so that's good. Correct units. Well, we had density over density, so those units cancel, so that leaves us with units of meters per second squared minus meters per second squared, so the units are correct. Was the magnitude of the answer reasonable? Well, there's not a lot of difference between the density of water and the density of an ice cube, 917 versus 1,000, and so since there's not much density difference, we don't expect the ice cube to accelerate really quickly. Also, perhaps you've seen ice cubes um, floating up to the surface, doesn't happen all the time, but you can go try it right now if you want. It doesn't accelerate up very quickly, and that is in line with our expectation here, or our uh, results here matches up to our expectation. So as far as we can tell, it's reasonable. All right, we made it through that. And remember, all that we were given was the density of ice. We knew the density of water already. We knew the value of g, the acceleration due acceleration due to gravity. And with that limited amount of information and these same relationships that we've been using throughout this packet, we were able to solve for the acceleration of that ice cube.